Welcome back, Officers of Republic. Your course on the roll, Police Chief AP Gaines, for another episode of AP Gaines without a funny title, because this is normal AP Gaines, and there is no funny title. All right, so we do these types of videos every once in a while, just to kind of catch people up, because there's a lot of new players coming in, people coming back, and people a little confused and doing some wild and some wacky things with their roster. Obviously, this has been mostly a farming guide channel for many, many years. Um, especially for free-to-play players. Obviously, if you're spending a boatload of money, you can kind of do whatever you want. So those players tend to be free-range chickens where they, they wander the farm and do what they please and only return home to be slaughtered by AP gains in the free-to-play rosters. Um, but today's video is the number one farming mistake that I see a lot of people making, and it's something that people have been doing since the beginning of, I mean, like people starting new accounts for Grand Arena and stuff like that. And it's, it's rushing stuff. Um, just the general concept of rushing is always, always, always a bad idea. Um, you know, a lot of times it started out with Galactic Legend rushing and then it went into the big S tier ship rushing and, and everything in between. Um, now, obviously, accounts that say they're rushing something but then they're farming a bunch of stuff and then getting it afterwards like those aren't real rush accounts so if you know you really want to get uh you know you really want to get slkr but first you're getting you know your double revens your cls your bounty hunters and a star killer and then you go for slkr like that's obviously not a fucking rush account you know what i mean um but the general concept especially in the uh in the field of galactic legends is the biggest mistake that i see a lot of people making it's been one of the lowest win rate farming strategies for years at this point. Um, I On stream, when people broach the subject, I often kind of relate it to... Um, this is going to sound a little weird for people who, who don't watch this kind of stuff, but I really enjoy watching like random weird financial YouTube videos, but like not the good kind where they like tell you intelligent stuff because... Any intelligent finance person is not going to tell you what to do on the internet because everyone's, you know, just like rosters, you kind of need a review. You can't just take generalized advice, um, especially if you've already built something up. You know, you want to make sure it's specific to you and what you have going on. But, you know, there's all these, I don't want to say get rich quick schemes, but a lot of them are get rich quick schemes, fake gurus, stuff like that, you know, where they're saying, oh, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, and you'll be rich in a week. Uh, the current iteration is a lot of people saying, oh, you can harness the power of AI to, to do all of this wild and wacky stuff and you'll be super rich. Now, obviously, all of that's bullshit um, and is the, the fastest way to lose all your money, go straight down into the dumpster. Um, so it's a little bit of the same thing as far as, you know, Russian Galactic Legends. It's a little sensational. Um, so it really captures the imagination of the viewer, which is, is nice. It's nice to, you know, if you don't care about Grand Arena viability and you kind of just want to get a cool character, get them quickly, um, and enjoy, you know, playing with that one specific character. Like you happen to be a huge C fan or a huge SLKR fan or something like that. Like obviously it's a video game. Um, and if you, if you prioritize fun over GAC effectiveness, you're probably a, a rational human being. Let's be honest. Not everyone thinks like AP gains where I'm just a fucking, I always refer to myself as a GAC monkey where I'm just like itching my, like, Oh, I gotta win G you know what I mean? Um, so if you're not that super serious about, you know, winning as much as possible and, absolutely annihilating the whales especially post money-based matchmaking you know maybe maybe perfect roster construction is not your forte and that's totally fine um you can still watch my videos for the entertainment value of me pretending to be a fucking monkey um but some of the main reasons why uh rushing especially galactic legends is never a good idea is you you leave yourself incredibly vulnerable and especially in money-based matchmaking where let's be honest all of our opponents have way more gls way more ships way more gp it's an uphill battle right and the name of the game in free to play grand arenas and again i say free to play because if you're spending money you obviously have plenty of more avenues to do sorts of uh, wild and wacky things but if you're specifically free to play the name of the game in winning grand arenas is opening up as many possibilities for the win as possible what do i mean by that well if you if you just go galactic legend your your only win condition is i mean you don't really have one uh, unfortunately but theoretically you place a team on defense that your opponent can't beat but more and more it's becoming galactic legends are not the unbeatable <laughs> threats that they used to be uh many years ago when the when the galactic legend rushes were popularized so in, in some senses they've been just absolutely nerfed to oblivion uh unfortunately for a lot of people who kind of really started getting into them and that's another thing is they take so long 
um, that a lot of times by the time you actually accomplish some sort of rush feat, whether it's a, a ship or a GL or something like that, it's it's been like six to 12 months and the plan that you thought you were going to use is kind of, and by kind of, I mean very outdated and no longer effective and you're just kind of left holding the bag, if that makes sense, and you don't really have a way to, to counter the new stuff that you're going to be seeing. Um, and new stuff in the sense that, you know, there's new teams that come out, but also as you climb GAC ranks, you're going to fight bigger and bigger opponents who do different things, right? And you have to essentially prepare for everything, which is going back to the original point. You want to be as flexible as possible to have as many win conditions as possible. You know, some GACs, you might have, you know, a couple of stronger backbone teams where, you know, you can get a couple of holds on defense, right? And you can be a little bit more efficient on offense. You can do something along the lines of saving all your best high banner teams for offense and then just going straight efficiency against your opponent. You know, you, you build up a couple of fleets and maybe you have an opportunity where your opponent has weaker fleets and you can do the grand old fleet only defense strategy that has been ironically the highest win rate <laughs> strategy over the last like a year and a half. Um, but the name of the game, and I, I we will have a video um, soon about uh -oh, about about all this. I got a graphic made, and I'll explain it all to you. And obviously, it's a little goofy because I say goofy things, but I mean it's pretty obvious that the fundamentals are there. I just like to package it in something that's a little a little wild, a little wacky, uh, a little bit fun to listen to instead of just getting beat over the head with numbers and strategies over and over again. Um, but you really want to maximize the things that you can do, the number of win conditions that you can have. Because if you do something where your roster is so unbelievably focused on one specific thing, like you might have a couple of a couple of GACs where you know that one strategy that you can implement will get you a win. And I always have told these people since literally Grand Arena started, I've been telling it's like you're gonna win about forty percent of your GAC matches because people either don't play or they're just unbelievably stupid. Like, I, I, nothing against the people that just don't understand how the game works, but beating the lowest common denominator of GAC players, you can do with, with Tuskins, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't require any specific strategy. So about 40% of the time, um, and this number has fallen, obviously, the higher you climb in Grand Arena, and especially since money-based matchmaking came out. So the number is probably more realistically around 30% right now with all the changes that have happened over the last couple of years. So let's just say 30% of your matches, you're just going to automatically win no matter what. Um, if you have only one specific strategy that you can implement, maybe you win another 15% of your battles and you're winning 45% of your battles or 45% of the battles that you could potentially win. Cause obviously there are battles that are just complete outliers. You know, you're a, you're a brand new player. You're 1.3 million GP. You're starting GAC for the first time. And Oh shit, there's like a 5 million GP. Uh, account that you meet in your first ever grand arena, and you're like, holy shit, AP Games, I just started GAC for the first time. What's this? Why can't I even play the game? Uh, that's a question for Capital Games, not for AP Games. You can you can ask them why they continue to perpetuate money-based matchmaking, um, especially at the lower ends. It's 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 ridiculous. So a lot of you guys who are in the lower GPs, I really, I really feel for you. Um, but going back to the original point, um, you know, maybe maybe of the matches that are winnable, you can win 45% of them, 30% of them because you're playing idiots and 15% of them because your one specific strategy works, right? Like that's not a great number of wins. And I know that if you get to Kyber one, a lot of people will say, oh, AP gains, I'm in Kyber one. And you know, it's mathematically kind of hard to win more than 50% of your GACs. Well, if you're in Kyber one, you're dealing with a totally different subset of people than the rest of the, the community. And you have different problems, you know, early game, it's all about building teams, right? Unlike rushing a galactic legend, it's all about building as many teams as possible. Obviously you start with core eight, build a couple of auxiliary teams and you build height with a galactic legend and an S tier ship, pretty basic stuff pretty obvious to most people who play this game um mid game it's all about having as many ships as possible do you have your executor do you have your profundity now especially do, are you are you prepping for your leviathan that's how you're going to dominate the mid game and the end game is always going to be do you have a better career path than your opponent because if you do you have more money and you can spend more money and you can beat your opponent um so i'm specifically talking about early and mid game players end game players where it's kind of just like a wallet battle uh, these are kind of outliers to most of farming stuff because, you know, let's be honest, uh, farming guides don't really work <laughs> for endgame whales because their farming guide is, oh, shit, there's a new character. Oh, I should probably take him to Relic 7 to test him out and see what he does and use him in all the game modes. Like, you know, a little bit different from a free-to-play farming guide where you're starting from day one, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's always been... It's always been mathematically a terrible idea to rush Galactic Legends. Now, there a lot of people, especially now, have been doing something like an executor rush. And it's kind of the same thing. 
Um, I'm less, I'm less against it because like, obviously if you're rushing something, you're kind of accepting that you're going to, to lose. And I fucking never do my fleet arenas because <laughs> my payouts at a really stupid time. So let's do a quick climb here just so I can have some, some footage in the background while we talk about fleets. Um, rushing something you're always going to sacrifice grand arenas because you're not advancing your roster realistically speaking right like you know getting up if, let's say jabba for instance like farming up mob enforcer to relic three or whatever the fuck mob enforcer has to be too like obviously your roster is not going to be improved uh during that process it's kind of at the end where you get us get the bump um so if you're farming you know say an executor rush for instance like you're gonna you're gonna lose a bunch of grand arenas right if that's fine with you that's totally cool and on the back end, at least you have the advantage of, you know, getting your top five crystals, just depending on what shard you're in. If you're an older shard, it's probably not going to work very well. Uh, but if you're in a relatively new shard, um, you know, having an early executor could potentially pay dividends in the form of crystals and fleet arena. So I don't really knock people um, specifically for doing something like an executor rush. It's obviously not good for grand arena wins, and grand arena wins is kind of all that I care about. Um, but it's definitely much better than, you know, galactic legend rushes which are kind of a relic of the past if you think about it because the original the original idea was kind of like the ships it was like build up crystals in in squad arena that will then you know perpetuate the growth of your roster which made sense but like right as it was happening they took crystals out of grand uh, out of fleet arena so uh the the general concept is kind of a relic of the past that still exists to this day for some reason um but you know, if your heart really desires an executor rush, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be any better than building a good a good grand arena thing long term. Like, if, especially if you're a newer player and a newer shard, um, you know, you, you'll do fairly well in fleets. You're not going to do as amazing. But if you really, really, really want to farm executor at the very beginning, um, it's it's the gap is much closer than something like a C S L K R Java fucking ray i don't even know if anyone's ever done a ray rush uh that sounds absolutely ridiculous um but the gap is much narrower than if you were to to rush characters because characters have much less viability in the game than fleets do because there's much less fleets obviously and fleet reader has crystals um so we will have we will have the updated farming guide um and every time i say updated farming guide people always freak out like oh my god ap gains is everything i've been doing for the last three years not viable anymore no it's still obviously the best farming guide um whenever we updated it we usually add like one team because new teams come out so we like slot them in somewhere fun um but more realistically we kind of repackage it to make it easier for people to understand because we use a lot of terminology the, that a lot of people find confusing if they haven't heard it a bunch on streams or on videos or stuff like that um so that video will be out you know at some point in the future with fun graphics and stuff like that so uh subscribe to help us get 28,000 subscribers we've been trying to do that for like two months at this point <laughs> um as always i love you and i'll see you later bye bye whoa, 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 whoa.